In the early days of AIDS, if you were diagnosed, it was a death sentence. I'd see these amazingly beautiful men reduced to just walking skeletons. 1993 was the worst year. That was the year I lost most of my friends. One hospital visit to one memorial service, to, to, the, to a funeral, to a cremation service, to a hospital visit. One after the other after the other. It's hard, you know, people don't come forward and I understand why. I didn't come forward for 10 years. I lived in absolute fear and horror that I would be found out. Those of us who remember the 1980s still have the scar, emotional scars of the death and the dying. And those scars may have hardened and healed in some respects, but, the, but they're still there. And one day my roommate showed me this lump that he had on his shoulder and uh, you know, this is about 1981, 82. And uh, I went with him to the doctor and the doctor said, you have AIDS. We didn't really know what to do or to say. And I said to him, well, can you give us a referral? And he said, there are no referrals. You know, are you religious? Sometimes you were taken to hospital. They discovered that you had AIDS. They didn't want to touch you. I mean, there were times when, when people would die and be put in like black, garbage bags. I mean, these are the sons of people. They were treated like garbage. People have a harder time believing that you can get HIV from one act of unprotected sex. In my case, I think it was one, maybe two, you know? So with a friend, a good person, someone I knew, someone I trusted, someone who didn't know that he had it. It took me three years to confirmed that I was in fact HIV positive because I didn't want to know. None of us wanted to know because if you were HIV positive, it probably meant you were going to have AIDS and then die. My boyfriend, Michael Galt, died of AIDS. Michael was on the Protease lottery. His number wasn't called because it wasn't approved in 93. His number didn't get picked. He died. To me, that, that shows what the meds did how if you weren't lucky enough to have your number called, you died. And if you were part of a trial for the protease or lived long enough to actually be somebody who could just get it at a pharmacy, you started to live. I remember that period where friends who looked like they were gonna die, suddenly the retroviral drugs started being available and they went from being emaciated, sick, Kaposi's, everything, to actually clawing their way back into some kind of functional mode. So hallelujah, that was amazing. And frankly, had I not been in that early clinical trial, um, I might not even be here today. There's so many people who didn't make it. Um, and I was right on that cusp of, you know, had I been diagnosed a little bit earlier, I might not have made it. People died back then so that others can live today. And those who live today need to know the sacrifice that those people who died made in the 80s and the early 90s so that their sacrifice wasn't in vain.